Are you longing to hear your name? I wonder about that because, see, as, as the seventh of nine kids, Easter morning sometimes can be a little tense. You know, trying to get everybody to look just right. My mom had this thing. Not only did all seven of us girls um, wear just the right outfits, we had hats and matching shoes. You know, not carpeted floors, the one that went clickety-clack as you came in. It was one of those things that I said I would never do this when I was a parent. You know how you start off and you say, Katie, come on. Then it's, Katie... Then it's Catherine. You know you're in trouble. So today when you hear your name, I invite you to hear your name as Jesus has called out to you. Katie. With love and compassion, no scolding, no reprimand, but an invitation to know this joy that we feel that we are sharing among us it is true. Okay, something a little uncomfortable, but we're going to do it. Whether you are here every single week and you somehow today found your typical spot in a pew, or you got jostled around, maybe in an unusual spot, whether you're here for the first time or we have longed for you, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say your name. Introduce yourself so your name is heard today. Ready? On the count of three, introduce yourselves. Go. Open you back in. One, two, three. I wish I could videotape that moment. There's a moment you wonder, is she serious? We're going to talk out loud in the sermon. And then the moment when I, you reach over to your neighbor, I wish you could see the joy on your faces. The joy not only in, hey, here's who I am, but the joy of someone who listened and reached out and connected with you. I believe that's our message today with Christ. Here's how the story kind of goes. This journey that we've been on, not only have we welcomed Christ on Palm Sunday, we were shouting, Hosanna, this is the guy, this is the one. Quickly, by the end of the service, we're already shouting, now crucify him. As the week has turned on, it becomes quiet and darker. Dark just like our hearts sometimes, the sinfulness inside us, where we are all about the absence of God. Yet God is here. And you walk in today and there is beauty and there's light. And if you're up here, you can smell, you can see, you can feel. God is indeed alive. In our passage today, Mary does not know this yet to be true. She's at the tomb, and the scriptures say she is crying. That is such an understatement. Because if I was to say to you, I saw my, my um, daughter crying, you go, okay. But if I told you, I saw Mary wailing, aching, broken. That is what our Mary was doing beside the tomb. Why? Because the door of the tomb, the stone that sealed the tomb was now open and she felt lost. The disciples come here and there and they look inside and all that is there is linen and they run away but they're distracted, they're in chaos, they don't know what to do. Mary is there as she weeps, she looks up, and unbeknownst to her, angels look at her. Jesus looks at her, calls her by name. <coughs> this
this is the moment where creation is claimed in the darkness of this story. The darkness being the things that hurt. The darkness, the things that were meant to be locked away in the tomb. God has conquered that. Whatever is on your heart today. Maybe it's dancing for joy. Maybe it is celebrating. Maybe it is grieving news. Maybe it's a journey you do not want to be on, but it is a journey you must face. Maybe it is broken relationships in your home. Maybe it's broken relationships at work, at school. These things are meant to be conquered. They are the things of the tomb, the dark. And God says, here I am. Mary is still weeping, looks up and sees the angels. Jesus. Mary. Mary. Calling her by name. Do you long to be called by name? God assures us today. In this journey, the God of all creation already had authority over death. This journey that we proclaim again and again for 2,000 years did not occur because it was a backup plan or a plan B. It was God's plan all along. I have made you and I claim you. Let me walk with you so you will know. Mary. He says, it is personal. The story that we share over and over again. Mary, you are loved, you are forgiven. What do you need to hear today? What are you longing to hear today? God says, I am here. How do we know? How do we know? Because Mary, just like the disciples, often in question, often in doubt, often wondering. She turns around and she says, Rabboni, teacher, teacher. Mary, he says, not out of scolding, but out of love. This day that we celebrate, it is indeed beautiful, but it was God's plan all along that you see the beauty of what God has made. And what God has made is you. You were made to be in relationship with God, not out of burden, not out of, of disaster, not out of heartache. You were made out of God's love. Made so that you would be loved and love others. Sometimes we get lost in that. We try and make this journey of our own making. Make it as if it's us. It's all about us. And God says, once again, I'll show you with my own sacrifice of my own self. It's what I do, my act for you, my gift for you. Some of you today, just like you and I, all of us at some point, there are times where we doubt and wonder about our question. Is it true? So did the disciples. So did the disciples. And if those closest to Christ who walked by his side sometimes messed it up and got it wrong, sometimes thought more about themselves than they did the Lord, sometimes didn't even know that all had come true, that the stone was empty, but more importantly, Christ would rise. But our Lord, our Father our creator, in those moments. Believing is an act that it doesn't have to be counter or contrary to doubt. Believing, the I-N-G part, allowing us to say, in this season, Lord, this is how I know you. Do you know me? In this season when I have questions, oh God, do you still claim me? In this season of life, when I hurt, when I have chaos, when I am lost, do you see me, God? And God says, yes. Mary, he says. He says your name. He says my name. Welcoming us. 
that this doubt, this fear, whatever it is that's keeping you, this distraction keeping you away from God, whatever it is, God still is hanging on and is proclaimed to be true. How do we know? What does Mary say? I have seen the Lord. In what could have been only but darkness, it's personal. Mary, he says, and then she runs and says, I have seen the Lord. That is our hope. That is our promise. Not of our making, but of God's. Today, when you taste the body of our Lord, that sacrifice was for you. Today, when you taste the blood of our Lord, that sacrifice was for you in the body and the blood. It's personal. Hear your own name. The body of Christ is given for you so that you and I can say, we have seen the Lord. That is our message of hope. Let us try it once. I have seen the Lord. Now say it. This is your slam dunk, seconds, half court shot. I know you've looked at it on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever. You've seen this amazing moment when the crowd busts into joy. This is better than that. This miracle is, this miracle breaks the bonds of this earth and it frees you. So when you say, I have seen the Lord, say it as if you believe it to be true. Ready? I have seen the Lord. One more time. I have seen the Lord. And the third time. I have seen the Lord. Bank on it, for it is true. Amen.